We believe he will veto both of these bills. We believe he's on the right side of this issue. When you have both the Daily News and the New York Post editorial boards singing the same song about the need to renegotiate these bills, that should tell the folks on the other side that maybe they've lost a grounding in what common sense New Yorkers want. So I don't want to bore you with more speech. Um, I'll call up some of my colleagues next. First, we will have Councilmember Ariola. Thank you. Councilmember Carr. Thank you, Minority Leader Borelli. It's good for us all to be here speaking some truths, but I wish, like my colleagues and those in this coalition, that we weren't here having to speak up against these ridiculous pieces of legislation. Today, the Defund the Police Caucus of the Council and the movement is trying to accomplish with legislation what they couldn't accomplish in the last two budgets. In our first budget as this council, with this mayor, we restored COVID era funding cuts to the NYPD. And we were able to maintain those levels in this budget. But now they're trying to undermine our police force by killing them with paperwork, by swamping them with unnecessary tasks, which is gonna prevent them from being exactly where we need them, out on the streets doing community policing an issue that has long been called for in this city, that officers be out on the beat engaging with the public. Now they're being told that they shouldn't do that, that they should be filling out paperwork, and that's what they're going to end up doing if this bill passes today, as is expected. And on the corrections officer side, we have a council that says that they want to improve conditions at Rikers, but that cannot really be their objective. They are doing all they can to make it harder to run Rikers. And our corrections officers risk themselves day in and day out. And now they're having one of the most important tools at their disposal, punitive segregation, taken away from them. How do you create consequences for people who are already incarcerated if you cannot then segregate them from the existing inmate population? There have to be consequences for disciplinary matters inside our city jail. And punitive segregation has been an important tool at the progress that's been made over the last 18 to 24 months in improving conditions at Rikers. Uh, a set of conditions that have to continue to improve, but likely will not if this tool is taken away from our corrections officers. So I stand with all my colleagues here today. I stand with my colleagues who voted no in committee earlier. And I hope that these, these pieces of legislation do not become law, because if they do, they're going to have serious serious consequences for the public safety of New Yorkers, as well as our police officers and corrections officers. Thank you. Uh, next is my colleague and the other co-chairman of the Common Sense Caucus, Councilman Holden. Thank you, Councilman Girelli. Let's talk about 586 and Jamani Williams' bill. War on police continues, and he's done nothing to create public safety or to improve public safety. By the way, we just came, I just voted against the bill. Uh, of course, it passed 6-3 on the committee, but this is the pull-down menu that Jumani Williams says, which, by the way, for level one, level two stops, it doesn't exist. But this is the, about 50 questions on level three uh, stops that the cops have to do now. Level one and level two, he says, will be five questions. If anybody listens to the scanner, and I do, because uh, sometimes you don't have a life and you really want to know what's going on in your community, and you listen to the scanner, you have to. Uh, and I'm hearing normal operations with a full precinct of cops that we had in the past. Now we have half the amount of cops that we once had. I'm hearing each unit, each police car out there holding 5911. So they have to answer five. Because uh, sometimes you don't have a life and you really want to know what's going on in your community. And you listen to the scanner. You have to. Uh, and I'm hearing normal operations with a full precinct of cops that we had in the past. Now we have half the amount of cops that we once had. I'm hearing each unit. Each police car out there holding five nine one one calls. 
So they have to answer five calls before they get to the last one. And then they're supposed to do reports, by the way, if this bill passes, and it will probably. Uh, they'll have to do more reporting on level one and level two stops. That is ridiculous. It's insane. 8.5 million 911 calls. Do the math. If you have to report on each of those calls, 8.5 million reports. That is crazy. It can't happen. By the way, at the hearing we had back in March, Jumani Williams didn't stay to hear the NYPD uh, testimony. He couldn't be bothered. How many ride-alongs have he done? Has he done with the police to see what a cop's life is like out there? They're going from one chaotic situation to another. So he wants to bog down the police with paperwork. He said it'll make his community safer. That is insane. Anybody who has, you know, is fair-minded. And I asked, by the way, the proponents of this, I asked them, did you ever do a ride-along? No. Did you ever, do you know what a cop's life is like? No, they don't. But they, yet they're coming up with bills that will make it impossible to be a police officer, an effective police officer in this city. This will not improve public safety. This will make the cops offline doing reports. Does anybody want that? We want them on the streets. We want them enforcing our laws. It's crazy out there now. Anybody who's lived in this city as long as I have, there's not many here that have, uh, I understand how to get, get back on track. Again, it was broken windows. Start enforcing the smaller laws, the, the lesser crimes, and you'll take care of the, of the bigger ones. That worked in the 90s. It worked. It's proven to work. Bill Bratton says this bill, by the way, can't work. It can't function. We can't be a functional city with this kind of mentality of police reporting on all levels of stuff. And by the way, on the uh, the other Jumani bill, uh, they call it uh, solitary confinement. Solitary confinement in our jails hasn't existed in probably a decade. So you see the ploy that Jumani Williams is doing. He's He's talking about solitary confinement. That doesn't exist. The whole bill is flawed. So it's really kind of restrictive housing is, is the proper term. That means the correction officers, to, for their own safety and the safety of other inmates, have to separate the person that's assaulting, splashing, uh, doing other things in, in the general population, that they have to be separated. Take away that option from correction officers, and you're going to get more attacks on both detainees and correction officers. Again, another Jermani Williams bill that should never see the light of day in a proper council, a council that's functional. But this city council keeps doing things that are way, way out there on public safety and, of course, jail safety. So, again, you're going to hear a lot from the unions who all are against this bill, by the way, police unions. Anybody that has a right mind and is fair thinking and can kind of weigh options here knows that this bill can't work in public safety. Thank you. Uh, next we'll hear from Joanne Ariola. Thank you, Minority Leader. My name is Joanne Ariola. I'm a member of the Public Safety Committee and also the council for the 32nd Council District. I, too, voted no on this bill. Why did I vote no? Because since I came into office, all we spoke about was defunding the police. But this time, we're using a different angle to do just that, and that's dismantling the police and bogging them down with paperwork. We're supposed to have community policing. How are we supposed to have community interaction with our officers when they will then be bogged down with an app that doesn't exist yet to fill out forms for every single interaction that they have. It's absolutely insane. It cannot be done. It should not be done. It is going to be used to further distance officers from the community and their engagement and to do their job effectively. And Jumani Williams Bill 549 regarding you know, punitive segregation or restrictive housing, or what he calls, you know, um, you know, putting people in 
in, in the hole? No, that's not what it is. What it is, is a consequence for bad actors who commit violent crimes while in custody. So if this bill goes through, then what's going to stop them from committing violent crimes? It is giving bad actors the license to be more violent within the correctional facility, putting our corrections officers and staff at further risk. These two bills will really further deteriorate public safety both on our streets and in our correctional facilities. And I'm really disturbed about this because I was elected to make sure that each and every one of my constituents are safe. And these bills put them in a position where they will not be safe, whether they're working inside a correctional facility or they're on the street trying to protect the public or they are members of the public. Thank you. Our next Vicky Palladino. Good morning, everybody. Let's make this real short. This is an absolute disaster. This is another nail in the coffin of our NYPD. This is another nail in the coffin for our correction officers who are overworked and underpaid and beaten on a regular basis. Our police take them off the streets. This city council is toxic. Their radical agenda is even more toxic. Who's it toxic for? It is toxic to the entire city of New York. This city and its constituents are sick and tired, absolutely sick and tired of this radical agenda. And yet they continue to push it through. My colleagues have stated very clearly here today what's going to happen when these bills pass. And I want to make it very clear to the people of the city of New York that we stand with you we stand with our police and we stand with our correction officers. Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, from Brooklyn, Calvin Yeager. Thank you, Lita Varelli. <laughs> um, I represent the neighborhoods of Midwood, Bensonhurst, Graves, and Kensington, and a little place called the Village of Borough Park, USA. And as Lita Varelli said at the beginning, we do know that there was a majority in that building that will pass these bills. It's not a majority in my neighborhood, and I really don't believe it's a majority of New Yorkers who believe that these things are the right thing to do. When we talk about protecting the people who are on Rikers Island, who have to be there for their own protection and for the city's protection, it's also important to protect the people who are there while they're there. We hear so much about that from the building in which we serve. Everybody's talking about Rikers needs to be safer. One of the things we can do to make sure that Rikers is safer is that the extraordinarily violent inhabitants of Rikers are separated from the others when they do something that's violent. That must be a constant. It always has to be a constant. And it's not just for the protection of our city's employees, the corrections officers. It's also for the protection of every single other inmate on Rikers. And I don't understand the disconnect between those who believe that Rikers is fundamentally unsafe, so unsafe it has to close down, and yet hamstring and handcuff our city from being able to protect the people who are on Rikers, both staff and inmates. And it's very important that we have to recognize that that's what, that's what the segregation, the, the, uh, the separation of the violent do in, in Rikers. Let me talk about some of the other bills. You know, innocuous if you just look at one. It's a reporting bill, who cares? You know, a little, some bureaucracy. This is our government, New York City, we used to bureaucracy. A second bill, a little more bureaucracy, it's okay. But there's a theme about every single one of these bills when you put them all together. And the theme is to handcuff cops who do their jobs. To delay them from responding to calls to jobs is fundamentally detrimental to the safety of New Yorkers. If we ask cops to stop what they're doing and take an extra minute to do something else that isn't them going to the next job, that delays the service of the police that we're paying for from protecting us. 
somebody calls 911, they need that cop there before they even touch the phone. Every second of a delay is a second that a life can be put at risk. And when we talk about, we look around the city, we, we, we frequently talk about the, 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 the uh, detriment, the constant chaos, the almost anarchist society that we're seeing. People are calling 911 to report real problems. We, we shouldn't be handcuffing cops who respond to those jobs. That's what these papers do. One of my colleagues who spoke, and the ones we can hear from a few minutes, and the leaders of the police representation, they, you know, we call them unions, but they're cops. These are people who actually walk the streets, they know what they're talking about. When they get up to these microphones and talk about the things that they see, they're not just talking on behalf of members like labor leaders, they're talking as men and women walk the streets of this city ready to protect us, to put, us, to put themselves between us and danger. And I'm very grateful to all my colleagues who stand tall today to pass the no vote. We may come down at the losing end of this, but we can stand up for its right in the city council. Thank you. Also from Brooklyn, Council Member Ina Vernico. Thank you, Minority Leader. Uh, Ina Vernico from the 14th Council District. Um, I'm going to be really brief. I echo the sentiments of all my colleagues. And what I have to say is this is, we have no news for you here today. This is nothing new. This is the radical left continuing to actively participate in the destruction of our city. They ran through these bills this morning, all of them in committees, real quick, during the holiday season, right after elections, when literally nobody's paying attention. If, they, if these bills are so great, why are they flaunting them? Why are they proud? They know that all of these bills have absolutely no support from the public. 586 is going to jam up the police it's going to further handcuff the police. And in talking to some of the members of the law enforcement who've been in there for a long time, you know, they were saying, the people who are proposing these bills don't understand the impact it's going to create on the police department. Well, respectfully, I disagree because I think that the people who are proposing these bills know exactly what it's, what it's going to do to the police department because defund the police has become so toxic that the only way they're going to dismantle the police is through jamming them with paperwork. And the other bill, punitive segregation, is only going to endanger our corrections officers. So they're doing everything they can to further destroy our city. This is extremely disrespectful to the cops. It's extremely disrespectful to the corrections officers who work so hard to serve our city. And it's extremely disrespectful to law-abiding New Yorkers who pay taxes, who walk our streets and just want to be safe. So we've got about two hours for the public to call and email their council member and say no to this ludicrous nonsense. Thank you very much. Just to add to that, yeah, if there is also a veto by the mayor, we, we do want the public to reach out to all their council members. Uh, uh, next, we'll have uh, Pat Henry, the, uh, the president of the Patrol with the Devil Association. Okay. Matt Hendry, president of the Police Benevolent Association. Before they vote on this bill today, every New York City council member needs to understand what's going on in the NYPD. We are short thousands of police officers and hundreds are quitting and retiring every month. And the police officers who are on the department are being forced to work enormous amounts of overtime, and that's still not enough. Across this city, in all the communities, where we would normally turn out six to eight patrol cars, we're down to two or three patrol cars. That is the reality of policing across this city, and that's why response times on the rise. Every second counts when there's a shots fired, when there's an assault with a weapon, and New York City does not meet its public safety needs right now. We do not have enough police officers. And this bill will make it even harder for our police officers. It will bury our police officers' heads in paperwork. It's not gonna help us with response times. The city council members today need to start listening to their constituents. They are here. They need to listen to their constituents. We speak to the people in the community all the time. They want faster response times. They want more people on the, they want more police officers on the street. So 
They need to listen to their constituents today and vote no. Uh, next, Correction Officers of Benevolent Association, President Benny Bosch. Good afternoon. My members are under attack every single day behind those gates. 6,500 assaults on correction officers, over 1,100 stabbings and slashings. And what the far left city council members want to do and Jamani Williams is basically give those that are assaulting us, those that are wreaking havoc in our jails, a four hour timeout. We do not have solitary confinement in our jails. No one is being locked up for 23 hours straight. As it is, the watered down consequences allow about eight hours of out of cell time. So I want everybody, every New Yorker to imagine being on the subway and somebody getting cut on the subway or raping somebody on the subway. And my brothers and sisters back here locking them up and putting them in jail for four hours and then releasing them back to the public. That's what they want to do to every correction officer on Rikers Island. This is a tragedy. This is shameful. A year ago, we stood on the steps of City Hall with our members testifying over 50 sexual assaults on female correction officers. And now they want no viable consequences for those violent acts. We showed videos of unprovoked attacks of our members. And this is what our own city council, some of them, want to do to us. Over 38. Well, guess what? We will hold every city council member and the public advocate responsible for every assault on staff. This is not going to keep anybody safe behind our, our in our jails. This is going to raise and, and um, embolden the inmates to commit more violent acts. We need our, our city council members to vote no on intro 549 because it's going to get more people hurt. Thank you. Thank you. And, and that's a great point, just to follow up. All you guys like to put cameras in people's faces? Put a camera in someone's face who's voting for this bill and ask, is it okay that someone sexually assaults a female correction officer and they get the same punishment as my eight-year-old? They get a timeout. They get sent to their room. That's the world we live in, and those are the questions that these members should be confronted with by you in the media and by their constituents. Uh, next, I want to call up the Detectives Endowment Association President, Paul Jocko. Good afternoon. What's being done here today in this city council is counterproductive to the public safety and the well-being of the people of this city. Jamani Williams, his whole career, has done nothing but try to tie the hands of the police. And he's doing that here today again. Not once has he ever introduced a bill to help the police or help the victims of crime. He's one-sided and he's for the criminals, not for the law-abiding citizens. Now what's going on in this council today also is people are afraid to vote the way they really want to vote because there's legalized extortion going on in that city, city council. If you don't vote the way the speaker wants, you're taken off the committee and that's extortion. And it's illegal and it's got to be exposed. We are down over 2,000 detectives in New York City right now and investigating these crimes, these homicides, these shootings take time. And without the proper manpower, we cannot do the effective job that we need to do. Thank you. Thank you. Next, uh, Lieutenant's Benevolent Association, President uh, Louis Turco. Uh, real quick, speaking of the world we're in right now, the insanity of this bill. We're being told right now that the next three classes, five classes of cops, we're not going to put in. Councilman Holden was spot on. Every council member should go to their resident precinct and find out how many sex cars they turn out. See what they turned out 10 years ago. See what they turned out five years ago. See what they turned out last night. There's no cars out there. There's no sex cars out there because of the shortage of manpower. Now we're being told we're going to have less manpower and, and, and officers going out there with the budget cuts. So what is their answer to city council? Let's bog down those second cars for paperwork. That makes no sense. And like Councilman Yeager said, he was spot on. Every minute and every second counts when you get to that job. So we're gonna have our officers sit there and do reports. It makes no sense. It's lunacy, and every New Yorker should be petrified with these two with, these, with this bill. Thank you. Any 
Next we'll have the Captain's Endowment Association President, Chris Monahan. Good afternoon. Um, in 34 years in the New York City Police Department, I was a cop on the street in the early 90s when crime was out of control. And the reason it was out of control was we didn't engage. Not only the reason we didn't engage, we didn't engage with criminals, we didn't engage the community. Um, we did a tremendous job in the past 34 years. Um, we started engaging criminals. We got community policing going. Um, crime was down. This bill is just another way for us not to engage. Take us off the street, bog us down in our radio cars, not to talk to uh, people in the community, and not to engage the criminals. So I urge people of the city of New York, contact the council member, we want the police out there, we want engagement. And I think it's pretty ironic that um, a guy who has a security detail Introduce bills that are going to make regular citizen of the city of New York much, much, much less safe. Thank you. And next we'll hear from the Sergeant Benevolent Association President Vincent Bowles. You really should be asking yourselves one question. The definition of public advocate. Who's he advocating for? It's obviously not for the people of New York City. It's not for the people he was supposed to be representing. He's advocating for himself and his own political game. This individual has done nothing to correct things in the city. The city council never once has sat down with the people who have done this job for decades and have experience. They refuse to sit with us because we're the enemy. Where they came up with that notion is beyond me because we are here every single day laying our lives on the line and our members are laying their lives on the line for every single New Yorker in this city, regardless of who they are. We have the biggest diverse police department in the country. We are second to none. And these people want to do nothing but destroy what it is that we stand for and nothing else. You talk about climate change and getting to a point and not change, not, not being able to correct things. We're getting to a point in our city where we're not going to be able to turn around what crime has done to, it, done to us. Businesses are not going to come back. People are moving out. What, what is it that, that these people actually stand for? I can tell you that they don't stand for the average person in the neighborhoods that they represent. Because the neighborhoods that they represent want us. They talk to us. They sit down with us. If they want to do something constructive, they should be sitting down with all the people to my left and the corrections and the corrections officers and, to, and see exactly what it is that is going on day in and day out. Not the life that they live in their little fairy land. Okay? At the end of the day, we don't have enough cops on the street. Do you need three more cops in a, in, a, in a busy command? My suggestion is to take them off the advocates' detail and put them back out on the street where they belong. Uh, thank you. Uh, so some good news. The, the Common Sense Caucus, which is made up of Republicans and Democrats, is actually growing. Uh, and we have with us two good uh, We have two members. The first is Christy Barbarato, who's right here from the Bronx. You wave. Uh, and the other one is Susan Lang from Brooklyn, and she's going to say some words. Thank you. Today um, is a day we remember nine years ago. We lost our two detectives. Detective Wei Jin Lu and the Detective Rafael Romo. So sorry, I'm telling you. City Council is considering awful anti-police legislation, which will make us less safe. And also, they don't consider anything about our police officers. We lost two brothers who make our city safe. And who is a, fa a father, who is a son, also who is the one contribute their life to our community. I want to ask the city council some questions. First, did the criminals or killers give Detective Lu and Romans time to fill out their paperwork? No, they did not give it any time. We are looking, we are asking police officers more and more paperwork. Then we also look at we're going to cut the police budget. How that's going to work? Is anyone can give in 
either. No. More work and less budget. That's not going to work. That's not going to make our city safe. The only thing will be less safe. Our officers, they are the ones who put their life in the line to protect us. The number one issue I see in my community is public safety. That's every single person care about. I'm a mother of two young little girls who go to public school and also newly elected city council member. I will do everything possible to keep our neighborhood safe. And I will do everything possible, not only protect our streets, also protect our officers in work in the streets protect us and make sure we are safe we need to support the police and the pro and the correction officers provide them the resources and also flexibility let them to do the work and also they are able to keep us safe Now, I hope you ask them questions and not us, but uh, despite that, we'll answer whatever you have. Hey, Joe, what were conversations like with the chair of the Public Safety Commission, our committee, Camilla Hanks? I noticed she zoomed in today, and she was voting in the affirmative to greenlight these bills through. Um, I, I think she, she's she torn. Fold? What, what occurred? I, I know think, you talked about she's, extortion. I think she's happened? torn, and I think, uh, unfortunately, she's on the wrong side of this talk to us about like how did you guys you can vote yes or no when she's voting uh, yes and I think what that's concerns did she have uh you'd have to ask her I, you should ask her the same questions that I told you to ask. okay some of the some of the unions here did in, end up endorsing I think captains and sergeants endorsed her would you guys pull endorsements the next time she runs I would seat? and a harp yeah. two seconds okay. any other questions Just one last thought. Uh, just, when it came from the, uh, the vote on uh, Jermani Williams' bill, uh, he, he got up and spoke about how there were so many shootings in his district. Now, he's not talking about Fort Hamilton. He's talking about his old district. And he said there's so many shootings. And, you know, essentially he was say, blaming the police. Like the police weren't keeping his community safe and causing more problems what he said and he said that we the opposition didn't understand uh, what what it's like because our neighborhoods are safe that's what he said collectively our neighborhoods are safe and his is not and the police are causing it that's the mentality we're dealing with here so again the, the people of New York City have to speak out stop voting for people that are going to do this make us less safe and cause the pain certainly for police officers, the families who have been out there, the line of duty, and are getting killed. They're, they And they try to handcuff. This is what Jermaine Williams is doing. He's trying to handcuff the police and make us less safe. It makes no sense, like I mentioned before. But this is really uh, a tragedy for New York City if this bill passes. Any other questions? Questions to the press? All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.